Uh, hello everybody and welcome back to 5 Minute Crypto, the channel where we cover the most important crypto news in just 5 minutes, back again with another video without ads, without BS, just straight up news. First off, Facebook's Libra could launch in January. This has been confirmed by a lot of sources and again that could be about 2 months, maybe even 1 month away. How exactly and in what way it will roll out we don't really know just quite yet, but it is around the corner. Not to be afraid of it though, because it's a stable-ish coin. The project changed a lot, but still, that fact is certain. And, I mean, I'm not really too much of a fan of it anyway. I don't think it's going to be mattering, but you should be prepared that it is coming. Wall Street giant with $295 billion in assets will invest in Bitcoin. The Guggenheim Funds Trust will invest over $500 million from the Macro Opportunities Fund into the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. With more than $295 billion in under-asset management, Guggenheim Partners will be the largest company to date to buy Bitcoin. So yes, they have $300 billion worth of assets, and they finally got their, I believe, go-ahead is what it's called from the SEC, to quote, the Guggenheim Macro Opportunities Fund may seek investment exposure to Bitcoin indirectly through investing up to 10% of its net asset value in Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, a privately offered investment vehicle that invests in Bitcoin. To the extent that the fund invests in GBTC, it will do so through the subsidiary. A very important thing to note right here is, first of all, they currently have $5.3 billion on a management there. And that's about 10% of the total. But the more important part actually is that they are buying it from Grayscale, which is just becoming too big of a trust they kind of find. Because PayPal, Grayscale, and Square, those three entities are buying up all the freshly mined Bitcoin. I don't know how much it is a day, uh, 600, 900, something like that. And they're buying it all. They keep buying it all, which is creating a heavy scarcity effect for Bitcoin, which is good. But it's also creating you know, less opportunities for other sort of sort of bigger players to hop on in since all the freshly mined bitcoin is already being bought away by these three companies bitcoin is taking over gold's place while bullion becomes the new aluminium max kaiser or aluminum how do you guys say this aluminum or aluminium i, am, <laughs> I don't even know how you pronounce that because a lot of you know in dutch is alum, al, al, aluminium and a lot of people when i ask them they also say aluminium but i think it's aluminum in english if i have to be perfect then all right, but this one is, again, talking about the fact that a lot of guys are hopping on into Bitcoin rather than gold, which is logical because the ROI seems to be pretty damn crazy on, on BTC, right? And since gold took a little bit of a top and fell back down hard, a lot of guys lost their faith over there. And also because gold has some use cases, but it doesn't really have a, you know, fixed supply or so. I mean, there is, theoretically speaking, a fixed one, but just there could be a lot of supply shocks happening. With Bitcoin, that's not really the case as we know the exact amount of Bitcoin that can ever be created. So it's a better store of value in that sense than gold is, which is to the surprise of a lot of these, these uh, I, I don't want to say the words, but I want to say boomers because that's what I keep reading here, the, those words exactly. And since these quote unquote millennials would rather buy Bitcoin than gold, you know, a lot of these older ones are like, well, gold is the best store of value. But time upon time again, it's being proven that it's not really the case because it's not really that useful. Uh, to hold anyway because there could be supply shocks which is just really losing your money up rather heavily i mean you can see the same thing happening with bitcoin but not because of supply shocks but mostly just because of a change in uh, supply and demand all of a sudden because of i don't know some 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 regulatory scheme or something like that ripple xrp prediction xrp to rise to one dollar hinges on one crucial upside barrier this is not completely true I mean, here they're saying XRP to USD remains primed for a big technical breakout. The number three coin battles descending trendline resistance on the 12-hour chart, and acceptance above the key 61.8 FIB hurdle is critical to take on the 60 or on the one dollar mark. And I, as I said before, don't completely agree with this right here. They're actually taking this newest move though. So from the high that we made the 24th to the low we made about the 26th, and they're taking that Fibonacci with a tip here at about 61.8, which we just or just hit or just did not hit, and now we're falling back down from there, and he thinks, this analyst thinks that that's the point which we need to reach or, or cross to get to the top or something like that. It doesn't really make much sense because there's, of course, other Fibonacci levels here as well, which we could find some resistance at, and especially this 78 or so cent one is an 
is a definitely an interesting one. So there's at least two points. It's not really just one. Uh, and, and then I think 90 cents or 89 to 92 is going to be another area of interest. And talking about XRP to keep it on that line, it is likely too late for Coinbase to give XRP holders free crypto. This is talking about that flare drop from XRP that Coinbase is most likely to lie to support with or too late. And I don't think they really want to. So, yeah, this is talking about the free airdrop or utility fork where all XRP is, you know, given or XRP holders are given some free flare. Again, you just have to follow a couple of steps, but I personally have not done it yet. So yeah, that was just a quick little episode. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys again in another one.